So we want to balance accountability with ability. And of course, your job as a leader is to manage that seesaw effect. Project Hawks here with $4 million strategies. Today, we have Jimmy Burrows. He has over 20 years experience in developing high performance leaders. Today, he's going to tell us how to create employee engagement. Jimmy, tell us how, what we should do. Thanks, Carl. I think if we, if we break this down very simply to two words, we need to have a balance in employee engagement of accountability and ability. And what we see in the world of uh, employees who are burning out all over the world right now, it's when their accountability vastly out exceeds their ability. And when we talk about accountability, the responsibilities they've got to deliver in their job, the number of tasks they've got on, uh, the number of things they have going on on their weekly basis that are beyond uh, their job, could be family responsibilities, caregiver responsibilities, and so on and so on. Their ability is a combination of their talents, their skills, the resources they're provided to do their actual job, and and the amount of time and space you're giving them to succeed. So what you want to see is we want to balance those two things up really beautifully to keep them engaged. So what does that look like in really practical terms? Well, if we're thinking about their accountability, probably the biggest barrier and opportunity area for most leaders is to get very, very clear on why are you doing what you're doing? What's the purpose of it? Are you very clear on how you're going to do that and the expectations on you to deliver it? And what support do you need? So when their accountability is clear in their own minds, they know how is that contributing to the bigger picture? What value am I creating? And I've got some support. That's going to keep them really, really engaged. Let's hop over the fence now to ability. Well, first of all, have they got the talents and skills to be able to do it? Are they actually able, trained, developed enough, skilled enough, or are they at the stage of their career where they're maybe still going to graze their knees a few times and you need to pick them up and dust them off? Uh, because people do, and we do want them to make mistakes. We do want them to learn, but we don't want to crush them with failure. So where are their talents and skills at? Have they? Do they need some training? Do they need you to come in and backstop them? Do they need you to show them how to do it a few times? But trying to hand over that response Responsibility. So you're not micromanaging everything, solving all the problems, answering all the questions and at the center of everything that is going to really help them stay engaged because they start to see the meaning of what they're doing. They're starting to grow and develop with what they're doing. So we want to balance accountability with ability. And of course, your job as a leader is to manage that seesaw effect. And if you see too much emphasis, maybe going to one side or the other, then just make sure you're having that conversation around what's going on in your world and how can I bring you back to the, to the middle? So we're not exhausting you, not burning you out, but actually keeping you really engaged with passion and care for what you do. Okay. So you hit something really interesting there, which is that balance point. Okay. How does somebody who's new at this feel or perhaps even measure that difference between those two pieces. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting because the the key for balance realistically is not sprinting all the time. And I think we've got ourselves in this habit of sprinting all the time since COVID to deliver, 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 deliver. And the reality of balance is there's moments of delivery and high energy activity. And then there's moments of reflection and learning and growing that come straight after it. So if you look at your daily operational tempo and the team around you's operational tempo and you go, crikey, we're all sprinting and we have been for weeks and months and there's never any, it's relentless and we're never seeing the end of the light of the tunnel, then maybe your operational tempo is slightly out of balance. Equally, if you're all sitting on your hands and you're bored, then maybe your operational tempo is out of balance and it's your opportunity as a leader to look at that and rebalance it. Yeah, you nailed it there. One of the things we like to recommend is, is in, a, in a 13 week quarter, 10 weeks of sprints, three weeks of something different. And, and because you need to have that balance and what we found that's about the right amount, right? You know, to balance for travel, trade shows, holidays, uh, things of that nature, but also time to think and to get rest between the next thing. Jimmy, thank you so much for bringing it in regards to employee engagement. Thanks so much.